for the same viewer? Yeah. That's a close enough. From ITAM, and he's going to talk about the dynamics of fluctuating uh, absorbed dipoles on gold ion trap surfaces, electrodes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share with you this, this recent result of, of this uh, surface noise. So this work, uh, sorry. Okay. This work that I'm going to, to present is um, was uh, initiated here at ITEM and uh, has been developed over the past few years uh, by a uh, like theory team work. Um, uh, benefited a lot from a close collaboration with Iron Storage Group at NIST Boulder. So the topic is pretty much the same as Dustin talked about, uh, but for me it's going to be mostly um, toward the uh, theoretical and computational perspective. So for the sake, Dustin talked about a lot of, lot of things, uh, but for the sake of the comp completion of my talk, I go over the, the basics. So the system that we are dealing with is an ion uh, sitting microns away from the surface in this planar uh, surface trap, uh, that on the surface, lots of things may be happening. So the problem is that the ion is now so close to the surface that can basically, the ion can basically see uh, any perturbation from, that uh, can be easily perturbed by the, by the surface dynamic. So this perturbation, as we call it, like the uh, surface noise, is measured at the position of the ion uh, within the motion or frequency of the ion, which is megahertz. And then this suggests that something may be happening in the surface within the microsecond uh, time scale. And that's what we are uh, going after to see. This, uh, this problem was uh, approached uh, back in the 2000 at NIST uh, by, um, by a group including um, Chris, Didi, and uh, Dave Weinland by introducing patch potential approach. So uh, the theory says that if you have a surface that is not uh, homogeneous in potential, so you find you can think of areas on the surface that is elevated, that has elevated or reduced potential with respect to this uh, quasi uh, equipotential uh, baseline. So if, if now, you can, if now uh, you can calculate the electric field due to one of these patches, uh, then, then you can uh, sum over the average over the random distribution of these patches and then get the spectrum of the noise at the position of this ion. What makes these patches different from, from another is just the characteristic of the surface of that area. The surface can be polycrystalline, it can be, has adsorbates on it, has uh, like all sorts of disorders, dislocation, so on and so forth. So the, the formulation is, is that uh, you have this ion, basically a particle, a particle in a harmonic oscillator. The only difference is that now a particle is, is, is a charge. So your Hamiltonian is uh, modified this way, and then that just gives you the modification of the transition rate between these between these states. Now, this is what we measure as the as in the, in the experiment. So we measure the time evolution of this uh, average vibrational occupation number. So with that machinery back in 2000, the question is, what else is left to, to contribute uh, contribute more in this in this regard? So this, this, is, this is a very like, um, uh, phenomenological, uh, clear idea to approach the problem. As Dustin showed, it also shows uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, not, not only explain the, 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 the physics, but also give you a very uh, good uh, estimate on the uh, distance dependency of the ion on the surface. Now, what you can think of is just to uh, the next step, just to look. I'm sorry, just to look at the uh, at inside these patches and see if we can provide a better mechanism in an atomic level that that gives you a better understanding of the fluctuation of these um, of these patches. 
So this was, this was the motivation. So you want to take this uh, electric field and replace it by something that has more atomic character in it. And then the rest is this, uh, taking the same, uh, the same approach. So you get the, uh, the, spe um, um, the spectrum of the dipole distribution and then trace it back to the noise spectrum and the position of the eye. So this is now, the assumption now is that your, eye, your surface is, let's say it's homogeneous, there's nothing on the surface that makes it inhomogeneousity, but the atoms, there are some atoms sitting on the surface, and then they make these dipoles, and then the dipole, these dipoles uh, uh, coupled to the, uh, uh, to the, the uh, uh, phonons of the bolt, and then they fluctuate. So that was the motivation of this, toward this dipole fluctuation, fluctuating model. So we want to cook up a theory like this. What are our ingredients? The ingredients are the power law, just, just may or may not work, but we have a rich parameter space. We have, we have frequency, we have distance, we have temperature. And then at the, at, uh, the other side, we have a uh, trap electric surface, which is very ugly. It has pretty much everything that we would, uh, we would hope that it didn't. It is polycrystal, it has roughness, it has edges, all sorts of disorders. And on top of that, uh, we have the contamination of the surface. So we have absorbate, uh, oxygen-free hydrocarbons, and uh, uh, that makes, like, contribute all uh, in this, this noise issue. So this is already, Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty too much to, to deal with. So we can back up a little bit and make our life a little easier by replacing that trap uh, electric surface by something that we know better. So this is like a more of a kind of crystallographing, non-crystallographing orientation of time, and we can also do uh, replace, uh, do the position of the contamination in a more controlled area uh, environment by like looking at carbon add up in the position in the, in the experiment. So now we have, we have the idea and we have uh, the, the, the ingredients. What are the steps to, to take to, to build up this, this theory? We, if there are like, atoms that are approaching the surface, we need to know what kind of interactions we are dealing with. And then out of those interactions, how do we make dipoles? And then if we make dipoles, how do we make them fluctuate? So these are the steps we are going to take. So in terms of the atom surface uh, potential, there are a variety of potentials that describe ab atom surface interaction. One of those that's mostly used in the surface, like known, commonly used in the surface science community is this, uh, this potential. As soon as you plot it, there are some facts, some parameters in there, but as soon as you plot it, you can see the idea. This potential already uh, gives you some bound vibrational states, right? And then if you can now calculate the dipole uh, magnitude of the dipole moment for each of these states, so it would be just a matter of going up and down this ladder in order to fluctuate, make the, the average dipole of the system fluctuate. So, so what's, what's a typical U0? Is that molecular depth or? This is, I, I tell you, this is for instance, this is for uh, neon gold. But it is just given by the by the species that you you take. But it's it's typical molecular yes. depth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the distance between vibration levels is also typical of molecular vibration. Of the of the diatomic yeah. species. Yeah. yeah. And why is it one of our three uh, on the long range? But this one? Yeah. Yeah. The, the long range part. This. Uh, why why is it in the, one of our depth to the three? This is exponential three. Um, out of, out of the surface. Yeah. Okay. One of the yeah. At the at the long range. <coughs> so now we want to make a dipole out of this. So uh, if you if, if this atom is approaching the surface, the idea that the intuitive idea is that the valence uh, uh, electron of this ion is going to penetrate into the conduction band and then disturb this wave function of the surface and then. That disturbance makes the whole function of the surface changes, and so on and so forth. So you can use this variation on an, uh, ansatz, and then uh, if you know the the unperturbing function of the system, you can get the deformed electronic wave function, and then uh, you can generate this this um, uh, di approximate induced dipole moment operator, 
and then if you do it for a noun uh, element like hydrogen, then you can modify it for a generic term of atom any atomic system. So now if you have this operator, then you can just use the numerical wave functions of the previous potential uh, uh, that I showed you, and then get the magnitude of these um, of these uh, dipole moments for all these vibrational states. So if you do this for a system like neon gold, that's just a sample system, then you can see that the magnitude of the dipole atom can be calculated by this way. Now we have the magnitude of the dipoles, we want them to fluctuate. So how do you fluctuate it? As I said, it's just a matter of uh, absorption and emission of the phonons uh, of the surface. So how do we formulate it? It's just we take this potential, initial potential that I showed you, and then we modify it by the displacement from the equilibrium distance of the atoms on the surface. If you do that, then it gives you a modified version of this transition rate between those states. And then when you have the transition rates, you can calculate the uh, time evolution of the population of the states, and then from there you can generate the uh, dipole moment of the uh, of the of the system, depend just based on this two point correlation function. So you're taking out the two, uh, two point correlation function based on the uh, electric field, and then we are replacing it by the population of these dipoles. So this is the machinery that that's supposed to be working. Let's let's take it, put it in action, and see how how it works. So this is basic, this is the same same system, and then we are plotting this dipole um, uh, mom, uh, moment spectrum versus the wave, uh, versus the frequency escaped by the zero temperature uh, uh, decay rate. So at low temperatures, as you can see, only like the thin, the thin, only two levels, uh, two vib lowest vibrational states are occupied. You can see this white uh, uh, noise. Uh, area and then right after you have a slightly one over f noise uh, area and then mostly just one over uh, f square that you are expecting from such system. If you now increase the temperature you get more and more of these states populated and then this area would be more pronounced one over f and then then after that you get this one over f square. The interesting part of this uh, formalism is that now you are getting this one over F regime out of just fluctuating of one dipole instead of having a random distribution of two level, two level systems. Now, <clears throat> this up here is just the uh, foundation, fun theoretical foundation of the system. Now let's go back and take, let's go back and take a look at our more realistic system. So we want uh, to have, like this is, this is what's, what's going on in the lab. So we have, we can deposit carbon add atoms on this surface actually. So the only the only thing to, to keep in mind is that now we, in the lab we are measuring the work function instead of the dipole moment that I was talking about. So what is it that you're looking at? This is these brighter points or gold atoms actually, and then at the, in between each two rows of gold we have uh, a missing row. This is one one zero orientation two by one missing row structure of the surface. Now the carbon atom, now we can do like the simulation for this system. So the simulation is now to, in order to get the uh, energy, all the electronic structure, everything like that. You're not using with the potential, you're now using the density functional um, the calculation in uh, local, uh, local density approxima approximation. Uh, and then we built up the surface like this and uh, see what happens when the carbon atom gets close, close to the surface. This is the potential energy of such system. So when the carbon atom comes close to the surface, it sees two potential wells. One, this A, is more shallower toward the edges of the periodic uh, boundary condition. And then uh, this one is deeper, but it's just inside the periodic boundary condition, but it's more energetically favorable. There are seven sites for the carbon atom to sit and then move around on these on these two two potentials. So <clears throat> we set this. Uh, I want to I want to show you a quick quick movie if it runs that shows how the carbons come close to the surface and sits on those those positions selectively. Um, 
this is a little bit slow, sorry. Okay, so the condoms are approaching the surface and then finding their place. So this, this part is just the A potential channel. This hit here, down here is the B, the potential well. And the carbons are getting stuck at the, at the, at the A edges, right? So, so this is already like one carbon atom on, on, uh, for, each, uh, for each gold uh, atom. So it's a basically coverage of one. And if you do that, then if you know where the carbon sit, it's just a matter of calculating the, uh, the energy of the system before and after. Um, you have the carbon at the Fermi level and outside the vacuum and calculate the subtract them and calculate the work function of the system. So if you do that, as, you, as, as Dusty showed you, you get this, this quite nice pattern that I'm explaining uh, the why uh, the work function goes down at the, at the, to get to, the, to this minimum at the coverage of one later on. So this is, as I said, is just for one of the uh, gold orientations. We have, as I said, we have like, the, the real electrode is polycrystalline. So we wanted to know how this, uh, this pattern changes if we look at different uh, gold orientations. So this different gold orientations, if you do the same thing, you get the universal similar pattern. The only difference is that some of them are, goes more deep in work, uh, work function. And the reason is that this, for instance, one 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 structure is more packed. The gold, the gold on the surface is more packed. So when the carbon comes in, they are not more, they are not really welcoming for the carbon to penetrate into the into the scissor gold. They are not, not welcoming for the carbon to get penetrated to the first layer. So the carbon sits on top and then generates a corrugation on the elect electronic charge distribution. These are the electronic charge distribution of the surface. So the higher these electronic uh, corrugation gets, the lower the work function becomes. So that's why the 111 goes down. But 1100 is more like the, the gold atoms are more distant, so the carbon gets the chance to get into the first layer, and then uh, the work function doesn't go like that low. And then the best is this 110, which is like the, the gold atoms are pretty distant, and then the carbon can really penetrate into the first, first layer. <clears throat> now, what is, what is left to, to look at? As Dustin motivated, there is the, if the carbon atoms or whatever is sitting on the surface, they may, they may move around. So the, the mobility of these dipoles uh, on the surface is, is a big, big question that we need to, to look at. So, so he, he already, Dustin already motivated it. So we have a scaling with the, with the trapping frequency. We have the suppression of the noise by decreasing the surface uh, as well with, uh, concentration. So we know that the noise, that the, that the, uh, diffusion is doing something. So I'm not going into detail of this derivation, but this is a nice analytical uh, form uh, of the electric field noise dependence to the uh, parameters of the surface. So we can start basically from the uh, uh, polarization density of the surface and then get the correlation function for the density fluctuation and replace that uh, correlation function that we started with originally with that with this density fluctuation because density fluctuation are going to give us the idea of diffusion on the surface. If you do it, then you get this analytical form. This analytical form has this temperature dependency on it. It has the stationary surface density and it has the dipole patch, patch radius. So if you plot this, then and compare if we scale it to, uh, to to the frequency to be able to compare it to the other literature. So you have you have a this this gray area that, that all these results are sitting. So the, the poorly known parameter in this equation, this, so this area is obtained by this from this equation. Uh, the poorly known factor, or the only two poorly known factors in this equation is this is this density and this radius of the patches, the upper patches that we see in the surface. So 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 we want to know how the carbon diffuses. Uh, so when, when we talk about diffusion, we, we want to see in the next slide the mobility, the motion of the carbon atom. But before we do that, uh, we just take the carbon atoms and sit on, put them on these positions that they said they are going to eventually find and sit, and see 
what kind of pathways they are probably get as more favorable in terms of energetics yeah, to go through. So this is like yeah, the same the same surface, and then you're top, you're seeing you're seeing it on top, from the top here, and then carbons may sit on top of these uh, these gold atoms, and then or they can make a bridge uh, in between like four golds, or they can go somewhere in between. If you calculate the energy absorption energy of the of the surface, you can see that there is about two electron volt difference between this more mostly like deep in B channel uh, bridge side compared to this edge. So it means that if carbon wants to penetrate to, to diffuse along this this side to go, this is where the top position is at right this edge. And then this one bridge is right down there. If the carbon wants to diffuse in this direction, it has to pass an act activation energy about two electron volt. But if the carbon decides to go along this diffusion, if there's one one zero like channel that you see, the, the there are still barriers, but the barriers are lower. So there is like 0 0.5 electron volt first, the highest barrier, and then um, 0.2 electron volt barrier on this side. So you can also just do the full map of uh, energy landscape, and as you can see, this is just the more, most, more energetically favorable positions for the carbon atom if they decide to diffuse on the surface. So this is also this this is just the trench of the of the of the surface that you you're looking at. Now, because these are density functional theory calculations, you have the access to the full uh, charge distribution of the surface. Now, if you slice that charge distribution, you partition it, and then look at the adsorption size, and then get these um, yeah, difference, like the, the charge transfer between the gold and carbon atom, then you can get from the charge, uh, charge transfer to the dipole moment, uh, uh, dipole moment transition change in, on the surface. So at the position of these sides. So if you do that, you can also see that the most, uh, the highest uh, values for the surface dipole is also happening along this trench line, which is because of the efficient charge transfer from the gold atoms to the to the surface. So the last uh, last thing is that what what we are what we are um, currently doing. So let me show you this uh, the surface. Now we want to look at. Uh, the diffusion, the real-time diffusion. So for that, because this the surface is huge, we want we, we have to do it in the like, classical uh, MD simulation. We can't do uh, full quantum mechanical uh, surface. I promise this is the last, uh, very last, one of the very last slides. So I let you go after. Sorry, I know everyone's tired. So, um, but uh, maybe this is interesting. I wanted to show this. So this is the gold uh, carbon atom. This is our gold surface, and then this is like the the trench. If you can see it, this is the trench. This is B side, and these are the A sides. So this is one trench, and then sitting on the next. So these are the two trenches: one channel and the second channel. So at low temperature, the carbon starts at one position, but if you are increasing the temperature eventually, and then you can see that the carbon starts to move around this, this channel before it gains the thermal energy enough to jump uh, out of this B channel to the A channel, the right next, and eventually it just deabsorbs, uh, it just jumps to the other like channel and then eventually deabsorbs from the surface, but in the experiment we never get to that point. So, so with this, with this uh, machinery, we can have understanding of the surface. But now, what is the, what is the problem? Like, what is the complication? The complication is that if you look at the actual STM results, uh, if you want to do classical MD simulation for this, if you look at the actual results, you won't see single carbon sitting on the, on the surface you are going to see something like this. So the carbon atoms are making huge clusters. Uh, this is a model like uh, surface. This is exactly the same thing that we are simulating. So if you look at the STM image, you see chunk of carbon atoms sitting, getting trapped at some edges between, the, between these layers of gold. So, 
So this is what we are doing now. So we have a very large uh, simulation cell, like 60,000 gold atoms. And then each of these carbon atoms, if, you, if I take one of them, I have like 1,000 uh, carbon atoms. So the goal is now to calculate the, uh, the, the, the fusion constant, to, get to see how the transition rate between these potential wells that we talked about, something like this, or the B and H uh, that I showed you before, how these, uh, how these um, play a role in, in, in the um, electric field noise uh, effect that, the, that, I, that I showed you before. So with this, I'd like to wrap up by thanking you again, uh, and then uh, take, take questions. Thank you very much. I guess that probably what I have to, to ask you is related to your last slide. I mean, you start with this very simple model, I mean, simple, complicated, but what I mean, what I mean single atom uh, on, the, on the layer, right? Yes. But then you said that you have those clusters. Yes. And so you interpret the, the single atom with a, a dipole model. Yeah. So do you mean that you want to transfer that dipole model when you have a cluster of uh, carbon by saying that the elementary interaction of those carbon are still this dipole, and you want to kind of sum the contribution of all that dipole, yeah, that's, yeah. so that you to see if there is some kind of <coughs> remaining effect which is indeed uh, 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 carried by this dipole. This is uh, this is the point. that's the sense of the, of okay. the uh, yes. Because yeah. when you have these clusters, then of course most of them will be far from the surface. So I mean, they don't care about that dipole between uh, uh, carbon and. Uh, uh, the gold surface, right? Yes. So, uh, so the, the, as, as Dustin said, we have, uh, like we are now, we are very low in temperature, but we have the RF. So we have some force or current from the RF that can also reach these clusters. So these clusters are going to move somehow. So if they move, not only they just move physically on the surface, they also are going to fluctuate more. So if you look now with this MD simulation, you can have the trajectory, force, <coughs> velocity of each of these atoms, and also the center of mass of these clusters. So you can just trace the effect of the R as something like RF or whatever force goes to, and then see how much it affects to the actual like vibrational motion of these dipoles. So what that means. So that's how we map it back. But does it mean that every impurity that you will have, every cluster of carbon, you will kind of parameterize, say, its action uh, through some kind of global dipole associated uh, uh, fertile dipole? I mean, what I mean is that would you have each cluster will be kind of a fertile uh, big dipole or? You can, as I said, I mean, I haven't done it yet, so we can look at the whole cluster as a single dipole by just looking at the center of mass motion of that. So, so we can say, okay, so let's just consider this whole chunk as one dipole and see how it fluctuates in any direction, z, x, y, z direction, and see how it works. Or you can just trace the outermost carbon atoms and then see how they fluctuate. So you have the freedom to, to do to do that. But that is one of the way to think of that, that each of these clusters are actually local uh, local dipoles. But the idea I think to start with was was to go beyond it because the patch potential model actually does it. So each of if you think of each of these chunk carbons uniform like the, the fluctuation be correlated along um, along this, this the size of these clusters then then, uh, then that would be the same going back to the same patch potential. What we wanted to do, like more, more than that, more atomistic picture. Um, I have one. Is there something known about uh, temperature dependence of the diffusion constant? That's what we are actually right now doing. So yeah. we're trying to calculate it, but there are no measurements. No, we are not. We haven't measured it yet. No. Well, well, I think there's been tons of measurements, but in diffusion uh, experiments, the results have varied over orders of magnitude. Even people doing the same systems. Over orders of magnitude. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a book called uh, Surface Diffusion or something like that, and it has all of the 
tables uh -huh. of everything that had been done since before that book was written, and they're all over the place. Okay. But like people do the, they do the temperature dependence so that they can get the uh, activation energy. Uh -huh. yeah. About when they make what you're talking about now, maybe in these simulations you were assuming some relatively perfect crystal line structures. I mean, so, so in real life, I mean, you might have uh, some case on the surface defects or something like this. And I guess, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a surface physicist, but I have the feeling that sometimes these defects can be very say, important for the real surface uh, action, for instance. Station and, and stuff like this. So I'm just wondering, maybe you have some. It is very, it is very complicated to get to, to those uh, effects because the surface gets very large in terms of doing calculations in measurement. If you want to uh, incorporate uh, any of those like effects, yeah. so that's why when I showed you the different orientations, I kept them separate. So I, even for that, I couldn't have all of them in one surface and see the effect because it just requires a huge. Um, and calculation. So yeah, I, I understand the, the point, and it's it's, it's appreciable, but, but uh, it's, it's far beyond the, the reach. Uh, maybe one one last question, if I may. Um, so you you estimated that the size of the dipoles of these carbon atoms to be a fraction of the body. Is that correct, or I mean? The, um, from the work function measurement, I didn't show the conversion to uh, to the dipole moment density, but I think yeah, change in the change in the dipole. But I think change in the dipole. So what I yeah, but I thought I was what what kind of surface, what what kind of dipole density at the surface you need and um, to. to Reproduce what what has been measured. I think it was like five to ten is what we got from the Kelvin probe. Five to ten divide. Yeah, but yeah. what? But the dipole density is that then basically assuming oh. unit coverage. Well, when we did the STM, we saw that we didn't have uniform coverage. We got those clusters. Yeah, and so I don't know. We could. From the size of those, but I, I wonder whether the numbers work out. So, I mean, mm. because I, that's basically. Yeah. Mm. I just have a different question. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you should finish. So I, I mean, yeah. So I just wonder whether kind of whether there's a reasonable type of density. Um. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, should, we should change that. It's a valid question. Yeah. So my question would be, can you do a calculation where you have one part and with a certain surface structure, let's say 1, 0, 0, and then you have boundary, and then the next part is 1, 1, 0, or whatever, and then see what happens, whether these patches or clusters can migrate across these boundaries, or whether they're more like the walls. Can if they are, like yeah, we can do it. But as I as I as I said before, if there is defects, like for one one one, the defects that people usually see, I mean, there is no perfect crystalline one one one. There are like huge elbows from the dislocation of the system. So to generate to make like that one elbow, it's just it's just out. We can't do it. But we can do perfect one 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 sitting next to perfect one zero zero. So. But that then doesn't make much sense because even for 110, as I showed you, it's a two by one reconstructed. So as soon as you bombard it by R1, by R1 it just reconstructed, even if you start from the, the surface. Even like we see three by one reconstruction. So if you want to get to something more realistic, you have to include those disorderness, which I can't do. But for the perfect one, as a, as a simulation, yes, we can do all those three structures sitting next to each other to, to mimic some patch potential in here. But how close they get to that information gives us about the real surface, <coughs> which is, that is the question. And I'm just wondering, 
when you think about diffusion, you kind of assume that it's uniform. Yeah. But if you have different grains, you could imagine that it's easy to diffuse on a grain, but then jumping to the next would be hard. And that is, that's it. Can that's you correct. model effects like that? That's yeah. basically my question. Yeah, we can do. I mean that. I mean we can do that. We can do see like how carbons move from one patch to the other one. But how realistic I can make those patches, that's a different story. I can make any patches that I want, but the real patches, that's, that's unfortunately too big to, to deal with. Yeah. Maybe to some extent. Yeah, that's why extent. I was hoping that just yeah. the boundary will yeah. tell you something. Yeah. But you always get reflected at it. We can we get or, reflected on um, it. Then that probably means yeah. if you have a coral like that, yeah. Your diffusion would be limited to that core. It's but just not example. about the how big you make these boundaries. It's just the thickness of the surface. You can't go. You have to have a certain thickness because you are applying RF. You're changing the temperature. The thing falls apart <coughs> if it's not thick enough. So we have like ten layers of gold. If you want to make it thicker, it's just it's already sixty thousand atoms. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's thank Hossein and all thank the speakers. You.